So this is the trailer for my upcoming course on software development for startup entrepreneurs. I'm Ralph Lemmel, I'm professor of computer science at the University of Koblenz Landau. This course is for the Otto Beisheim School of Management at Wallendar. The course is coming up in March, April 2014. So let's suppose our startup is into polls, so you want to help your customers to uh, manage polls where they can uh, raise a question and suggest some choices and then uh, we can run the poll for our customer and so basically people participate online in these polls. So we have a example here, what is the coolest language? That would be the question of the poll and then choices are Python, Java, Haskell and COBOL. So again, you help your customer to set up such polls and, to, and then you run it on your server and so this is our startup and I mean it's not very ambitious startup setup I guess but anyway there is a whole bunch of uh, websites doing exactly this and I'm just showing a few here and it really doesn't matter that much so I assume that pretty much any startup scenario that we could pick uh, requires significant information technology so just think about uh, your startup uh, that you prefer and so you're building some product. Uh, well, you need a website for your customers, right? You need to have a product catalog. Uh, you need to enable people to order and to do some tracking. And actually you need to integrate with other systems uh, through APIs. So you have a whole bunch of documents you need to manage also for legal reasons. And there's all kinds of other aspects, potentially customer relationship management, human resources management, enterprise resource planning. So the bottom line is you really can't have a startup unless you understand how to cover the IT dimension of it. So in this course, uh, we, we try to get together entrepreneurs and developers. Um, so I assume that you are more in the entrepreneur role, whereas I feel myself a little bit more in the developer role. Uh, however, in a startup situation, uh, these two kinds of people need to talk to each other effectively. And in this course, I try to help entrepreneurs to understand uh, the thought processes, the concepts used by developers. So therefore we just look at software development in a way as if we were building a startup application. So for you to enjoy this course, you really need to have a certain interest already in information technology. I'm not saying that you need to be a programmer already, but you should have an interest in programming, design, technologies to learn about it and so that you, in the end, are able to, um, to kind of uh, communicate with developers in a startup situation later on. So let's just look a little bit more in detail at the Pulse application. This also gives you a sense for the kind of things we are doing in the course. So here I show you a UML diagram uh, for the object model behind, uh, at the most basic level, behind the Pulse application. So we've got two classes here, the poll class and a choice class. A poll has a question string and a publication date. A choice has a choice string and the number of votes for this choice. We also define the cardinalities in how these two classes are associated. And so you see, we, we, we could be using UML indeed uh, in the design phase of our application. And then we would eventually look at the implementation of the polls application. So in this course, we will be using Python as our preferred programming language. And so what you are seeing here is just the layout of the implementation in terms of the files that are involved in it. So we have a database here, we have lots of Python uh, modules all over the place. For example, we have the implementation of the object model here. We have the views, say the user interface here. We have all kinds of templates. Uh, that describe the mapping from the data to the views uh, for the user. So this is the kind of architecture that we have here uh, in this implementation. And just to show you a little bit more detail, so for example, here we have a template that uh, actually describes how to map the description of a poll to a HTML rendering as shown down here. So here we use a certain template language as it's part of the Django framework of Python for the kind of web applications that we are building, okay? Yes, and here's a list of technologies that we actually cover in the course. Uh, so we use the Python program language, the Django web framework, uh, uh, the Python Anywhere hosting platform, 
revision control based on GitHub. Uh, there will be a bunch of other technologies popping up here and there, but these are sort of the key technologies. So Python uh, is a pretty nice program language that, uh, you know, um, that really quickly gets you going. Let me not say much more about it at this point. The Django frame, web framework for Python helps you to describe web applications in a highly concise manner at a high level of abstraction. And so the Python Anywhere hosting platform uh, allows us to develop these applications uh, in a manner that, that, that you don't need to set up your computer in any special way. You don't need to set up any web server. Uh, everything is done on the Python Anywhere hosting platform for you. So you can program and deploy in the browser. Pretty cool. And for um, um, uh, managing our sources, uh, we might be using GitHub. Um, it's uh, also pretty uh, uh, cool uh, revision control system with lots of features around it, enabling what they call social coding or let's say teamwork. Okay, so here's also a list of concepts covered by the course. So of course we will get into basics of programming and modeling uh, unavoidably, but I try to make this easy for you. So at a conceptual level, I want to make sure you understand the notion of model. I mean, uh, for modeling the business data in your startup and the operations to be provided on that data. I also want to help you understand the notion of view. So this is the kind of user interface um, notion that you need to organize your uh, web presence. And uh, we will get into classes and objects in, in the sense of the object or any programming paradigm. We will also get into databases, uh, which is uh, they are essential for persisting your data. We will also be uh, toying around with APIs, web-based APIs, uh, usually based on HTTP, so which helps us to provide services to other applications or to integrate other applications. Yes, and as mentioned before, we will also deal with version control and hosting. So you might wonder at this point how this course works, right? So, I mean, as you, as you might guess, uh, it's pretty much hands-on. So I will be showing things, um, but of course it's a university course, so still concepts will be pointed out, uh, occasionally defined and uh, um, universally linked to other resources. So I will not provide you with too ma many slides. Uh, this course is more about demoing and live programming, so uh, really hands-on. And all material though of this course is public and online. I will not uh, make any videos of this course, so this is the added value of attending the class. Um, so you are supposed as a student to exercise software development in small projects. This can take different forms. We have to discuss this. I mean, it doesn't mean that all of you will be doing actual programming because as I said, for example, modeling is also important. Um, we will use, uh, each time we meet, we will use part of this time uh, for Scrum to discuss where you stand, where you're going, what your problems are. So in the end of the course, there will be a final presentation and uh, you, will be, you will submit some deliverables and this will be the foundation for, for the grades. So here are some pointers. There's a course website, there's a public course repository of course on GitHub. You can always reach me uh, via email, for example. Um, comments are welcome at any point in time. And so I look forward to meeting you soon.